Hi, uh, welcome to this session. This is Carson Wang from Intel. Today, Xin Yang and I will talk about how to build a large scale data analytics and AI pipeline using Ray EP. This is today's agenda. I will first talk about the background and how people are integrating big data with AI and what are the challenges we are facing. Next, I will uh, introduce Ray and Ray DP projects and how we can build end-to-end -end pipeline with uh, these projects more uh, easily and efficiently. Next, Xianyang will uh, talk about the Ray DP API and the uh, architecture design. And finally, he will also show you uh, some examples. So let's get started. First, as we know, uh, big data and AI have been two uh, different communities. On one side, Apache Spark is one of the leading big data uh, uh, framework, uh, and, and it has been evolving in the, uh, quickly in the past 10 years. On the other side, there are uh, many machine learning and deep learning frameworks appeared and uh, become uh, very popular. There are also more and more intersections between these two, uh, um, uh, these two uh, communities. Uh, one reason is uh, because massive data is uh, actually very critical for better AI. So the model is important. However, to get a better AI, uh, we actually need a, a large number of high quality uh, data. And with more data being used uh, in the training and the model is becoming uh, more complex, a uh, single node can actually cannot meet the uh, computing requirement. So it's actually also uh, obvious that distributed training will be a norm. So we have seen many projects that try to integrate uh, big data and AI. There are projects like uh, Holovard on Spark, TensorFlow on Spark, which tries to run the deep learning framework on Spark. And there are also uh, projects that try to uh, store the Spark output into a file format that can be read by uh, the deep learning framework. Next, let's uh, take a look at some common setup that uh, uh, tries to integrate Spark with uh, machine learning and deep learning uh, frameworks. So the first uh, uh, approach is to use uh, separate uh, Spark and AI clusters. Uh, this is a traditional one. So in a end-to-end -end pipeline with data preprocessing and model training, you first need to write a Spark application and submit that to the Spark cluster. And then you store the output to a distributed file system like HDBS. And in the next step uh, for the model training, uh, the deep learning or machine learning framework may directly read the data from uh, HDFS, or it will need to copy the data from the Spark cluster to the uh, machine learning cluster, and then do the model training. So there are a few challenges here. First, there, were, there are data movements between clusters. And secondly, uh, there are overhead of managing uh, these two clusters. And if we look at the end-to-end -end pipeline, this will actually be a segmented uh, application. So you will need a lot of glue code to stitch together multiple programs. Or you will need a workflow orchestration to do that. The second approach is to run machine learning and the deep learning frameworks on Spark. Uh, there are a few projects uh, supported on Spark. And this is useful if you have an existing Spark cluster and you want to uh, leverage the resource in the cluster to do model training. However, uh, this is also um, some challenges here uh, because uh, this is actually uh, very specific to Spark and it requires the machine learning and deep learning frameworks uh, supported on Spark. So if you have an end-to-end end -to -end pipeline, uh, uh, but there is a framework not supported uh, on Spark, or you do not have Spark in the pipeline, then this will uh, not work uh, for you. Uh, in this kind of solution, it's usually uh, a distributed file system like HDFS are also used to exchange the data between Spark and the deep learning or machine learning framework. So this also will uh, add latency. Today, there are also more and more organizations moving to a single cluster managed by Kubernetes. 
by using a workflow orchestration framework like Kubaflow, uh, we can also actually um, implement end-to-end -end, uh, data analytics and machine learning pipeline on a single Kubernetes cluster. However, there are also a few challenges here. Uh, first, the pipeline must be written in multiple programs and configuration files. So you probably need to uh, write the Docker file, build the image, and write the Spark uh, program, and also the uh, machine learning or deep learning program, and then construct the end-to-end -end pipeline. Uh, this is not as simple as write a single Python program. Uh, secondly, uh, it will also usually require a distributed file system to do the data exchange between these uh, frameworks. So this will also add a latency here. So the question is, can we have a general purpose framework that can be used uh, as a single substrate for both data processing, uh, model training, and tuning, and also serving? And we want to uh, make sure we can develop the end-to-end -end pipeline easily and efficiently. For example, uh, do that in a single Python uh, program. And also, instead of using uh, only using the distributed file system to do data exchange, can we have a, a in-memory data exchange a way uh, to do that more efficiently? So the answer is to use Ray and RayDP. Uh, what is Ray? Uh, Ray is a a general purpose framework that provides a simple universal API for building distributed applications. In Rayco, it provides some simple APIs uh, like task and actor, uh, which corresponds to function and a class in our single node programming. Uh, these APIs are simple but powerful enough uh, for us to build a distributed application and uh, uh, distributed uh, libraries. Today, Ray has packaged with a few native libraries, uh, including RayTune for model tuning, uh, IRLib for reinforcement learning, and RaySGD for uh, distributed deep learning, and RayServe for model serving. There are also more and more third party libraries uh, being supported on Ray, in, uh, for example, uh, Holovad and XGBoost. And Ray also supports uh, deploy. Uh, multiple uh, cloud service provider and it can also be deployed on many uh, resource managers like Kubernetes. So uh, there are a few options uh, on Ray to do data preprocessing. For example, modding uh, provides pandas like API uh, on Ray. Uh, however, there are also many use cases that uh, uh, is using Spark as a major data processing framework in their uh, machine learning pipeline. So we created a RayDP project uh, to provide a simple APIs uh, for running Spark on Ray and integrating Spark with distributed machine learning and deep learning frameworks. When we run Spark on Ray, uh, we treat Ray as a resource manager and we run Spark executors uh, in the Ray Java actor. So this makes uh, Spark as a native library on Ray. To integrate Spark with the distributed machine learning and deep learning framework, we provide two approaches. Uh, the simplest one is to use a PyTorch or TensorFlow estimator. So you can simply create an estimator by passing the uh, optimizer, the uh, model, the loss function, and, and a, a few more configurations. Then you can directly fit the estimator with the Spark data frame, and we will take care of everything else and scale your training uh, on the Ray cluster. However, if you prefer to use uh, uh, Ray SGD or Holovad API directly for the model training, uh, you, we, can, we also provide another uh, approach uh, to convert your Spark data frame to a Ray ML dataset. So uh, a Ray ML dataset is a distributed uh, data set on Ray uh, stored in the Ray object store. And it can be used to connect with many uh, libraries like uh, Holovad and, and XGBoost. And this is how uh, we can use that to uh, connect with uh, these uh, machine learning frameworks. So uh, with Ray as a single substrate and uh, uh, by using RayDP to run Spark on Ray, 
and together with a few other uh, frameworks and libraries uh, on Ray, we can actually easily implement an end-to-end -end pipeline uh, in a single Python program. So we can also utilize Ray's in-memory object store to do um, the efficient data exchange between these libraries. So in a typical end-to-end uh, -end pipeline, now we can use BarSQL to uh, read the data and use the data frame API to do uh, data pre-processing. And we can also use the Spark ML lib to do uh, feature engineering. After that, we can just store the output data in Ray's in-memory uh, in memory object store uh, in Arrow format. Next, we can use any uh, deep learning or machine learning framework like PyTorch, uh, TensorFlow, Holovar, the Ray SGD, and also XGBoost and Spark ML lib to do the model training. Uh, we can also integrate that with the Ray Tune uh, for, uh, for hyperparameter tuning. Uh, once we get the uh, model, we can also use Ray Serve to do model serving. So everything will run on a single platform, Ray, and we can uh, do this in a, a single Python program, uh, which is much uh, easy and efficient. A Ray program can also easily uh, scale from your laptop to cloud or a Kubernetes cluster uh, seamlessly and easily. Uh, we can start with a small data set and we develop the Ray program in our local laptop. Uh, once it's, it's ready, then we can actually scale that to a, a Ray cluster. Uh, Ray provides a cluster launcher, so uh, we can use that to launch a Ray cluster in, uh, in a cloud or on a Kubernetes cluster. And we also support auto scaling. So we can actually start with a small number of uh, instances. And when your application requires more uh, resource, it can scale uh, with uh, more nodes. So this means that we can scale our end-to-end -end pipeline from our laptop to the cloud or Kubernetes uh, seamlessly without any code change. To summarize, here are the uh, benefits uh, of using Ray and RayDP. Uh, first, you will get increased productivity. Uh, it simplifies how to build and manage end-to-end -end pipeline. Uh, you can use uh, multiple uh, libraries and uh, frameworks uh, in a single Python program, including uh, Spark, SGBoost, TensorFlow, PyTorch, and a whole world and more. So you don't need to uh, write separated uh, uh, programs and uh, stitch them together uh, or use a workflow uh, orchestration framework. Uh, secondly, it will also provide better performance. Uh, instead of only using a distributed file system to do data exchange, uh, we can also use the in-memory object store to do that, uh, uh, if, which will be more efficient if you, your data can fit in memory. Uh, we also plan to integrate some more Spark optimizations. Uh, for example, we can also use the Ray Object Store to do the data shuffle. Uh, finally, you will also get uh, uh, increased resource utilization. Uh, Ray su supports auto scaling at, uh, so it can uh, do auto scaling at the cluster level. And Spark can also uh, support uh, dynamic resource allocation. So by combining these two, we can actually do the scaling at uh, both the cost level and the application level. So this, you will get a better resource utilization and uh, uh, save your cost. Next, let's welcome Xinyang to uh, give you an introduction of the ReadyP API and uh, architecture design. Hello, everyone. I'm Xinyang. I'm also from uh, Intel. Just uh, before my colleague, Cousin has given you some background uh, about the Ray and the RedDP. Now I will give you more details about the RedDP implementation and also give you some of the examples of how we use RedDP and uh, some other Ray components to write end-to-end uh, -end, uh, solutions based on, uh, based on the Ray. Okay, the first, uh, let me see how start have a Spark cluster on top of the Ray. Uh, the first uh, you need to connect to the Ray cluster with Ray point in it. And then you could uh, start have a Spark cluster with the Ray DP point in it Spark. 
uh, there are some uh, parameters uh, you need to pass them in. The first is the application name. And also you need to specify the number of executor you want to request and uh, the executor calls and uh, executor memory. And also you could uh, pass in the extra configurations for the for stuff to set up the Spark cluster. For example, the Spark local DIR or some uh, uh, normal Spark configurations. Then you could get a Spark session instance. Uh, after that, you could do normal data processing with the Spark uh, session, uh, such as read data from the parquet or do some uh, circle query. Uh, after that, you, you could stop the Spark cluster with ready people and stop Spark. Uh, this page gives you more details about how Spark is running on top of the Ray. Uh, as you know, the Spark, uh, the Ray has provided a very simple API to start up a new process, um, which is a non-running and a stateful process. Uh, we call it a reactor. With, with reactor, we also could start up uh, other actors. So in ReadyP, we treat uh, uh, Ray as a, uh, as a resource manager and uh, we and we run our application master and the Spark is culture with the uh, Ray, Ray Java actor. Uh, so the first of all, we need to start up our application master. Uh, it's a Java actor. Uh, after the application master has set up, our driver could send the its code request to the application master. When the application master receives the request, it will start up a new Java uh, actor with the given resource request, for example, the its culture memory and the its culture calls. Uh, then we will run the Spark its culture service in the Java actor. So the Spark its culture is running in the Java actor. Uh, that means the Spark its, its culture also has the ability of leverage Ray object store. Uh, the Ray object store is a shared memory service, which could use the uh, use to data exchange between the process. Uh, we we also have prod uh, uh, second like uh, is the match API on top of the Ray SDD. Uh, the it's the match API could fit on the Spark data frame directly on the uh, in the underlying the data exchange between the Spark and the, the deep learning framework is, is leveraged by the uh, Ray ML data set, the Ray ML data set that we were introducing in the next page. Here is an example how we create a touch estimator. Uh, the first thing you need to pass in the number of workers, that means uh, how much, uh, how many of the workers you want to create for the deep learning model training, and uh, you need to pass in the, the model, the optimizer, the loss function. And uh, here the feature columns is the column names of the Spark data frame uh, for, the, uh, for the model feature input. And the, the label column is the label column name of the Spark data frame. Uh, there are also have, have some other necessary parameters parameters you need to pass the in. After that, you got uh, uh, touch is the matter instance, then you could fit on the Spark data frame directly. The Ray ML data set is a distributed collections of Pandas data frame. Uh, in ReadyP, we provide a, a Ray ML data set to create a spark data frame, to create a ML data set from the spark data frame. Uh, when you create uh, a ML data set, you could do normal, uh, you could do some transformation uh, with user defined functions. And uh, you also could uh, call to touch to convert the, uh, to convert uh, the pandas data frame to, uh, to the touch tensor. Uh, which will cre create a touch ML data set. Uh, it, when you call the two touch, the distributed collections of the pandas data frame 
will be converted into a strip the connections of touch tensor. Uh, then you could uh, uh, the touch tensor can be used for to create a touch the loader, which could be used for the touch mode input. Here we get uh, the given set of the touch tensor, uh, touch MR data set, and create a data loader. In the underlying, all the transformation uh, is coding in the uh, is code in the NASI and it's code in the pipeline. In the underlying, the data is changed between the Spark and the MR data set and the uh, PyTorch or TensorFlow framework is, uh, uh, is by leverage the real object style and with uh, Apache arrow format. The first, uh, we need uh, we need to stop the st Spark data frame into the real object style. Uh, it will come. We need to stop the Spark data frame into the real object style with the Apache arrow format. Uh, it will con convert the Spark data frame into uh, collections of pandas data frame. Then the MR data set will uh, hold on those uh, start uh, uh, start data, and uh, then after you after we create the MR data set, we could do some uh, transformation, uh, such as uh, convert into touch tensor. Then we could share those data with the touch framework. Because uh, all the data are stored in the object store and with the Apache Arrow format, so the data exchange is uh, uh, very efficient. We could achieve the data reading with zero copy. Now let's look at some example how to use ReadyP and uh, some other Ray component. Uh, this this example is how to integrate Spark and uh, XGBoost on top of the Ray. Uh, the left side is the data processing part, and uh, the right side is the model training part. The first we need to connect to the Ray cluster with the Ray pointer in it, and then we start up a Spark cluster with the ReadyP pointer in it Spark. And then we could do the data processing with the Spark. Here we read the data from the CSV, and then, then we randomly split the data frame in two parts. The, the first part is train DF for the train for the model training, and then test DF for the um, model test. <laughs> After that, we create an MR data set from those data frame, and uh, we get two uh, two MR data set. On the right side, uh, we create a red D matrix from those uh, MR data set. And then we could uh, train our XGBoost model with uh, those uh, with those cre created uh, red D matrix. And all the data is stored in the red optic store. So the data exchange is also is also efficient. This example showing how to integrate Spark and uh, Howard on top of the Ray. Howard is a, a popular di distributed model training framework. Uh, it also supports run on top of the Ray. The left the left side is all is almost equally as we see before. Uh, we use Spark to the data processing and create. Uh, uh, MR data set from the Spark data frame, and then convert it uh, into the into a touch MR data set. On the right side, we first define the uh, train model, and then we define the train the whole world train function. In the function, we get the given set data uh, with the rank ID from the uh, touch MR data set. Then we create a hardware cluster with Ray executor. Then we could do our distributed model training uh, with Howard on top of the Ray. This 
this example is showing how to integrate Spark plus Harvard plus Rayton on top of the Ray. Rayton is a very uh, popular and uh, powerful hyper parameter search framework. Uh, the left side is almost equally we create a touch armor data set. And uh, the right side, uh, we first uh, define the, uh, the, the PenTouch model and uh, define the hardware the train function. Then we use the distributed trainable creator to convert the hardware train function as trainable by return. Then we could do our, um, we could do our parameter search with the, here, here we want to create such the epochs and the, the learning rate. Uh, if you want to learn more details about the right tone, you could visit the right home, home page. Let's do a simple summary of the Ray and RayDP. Ray is a general purpose framework that can be used as a single subject for end-to-end -end data analytics and uh, AI pipelines. RayDP provides uh, simple APIs for running Spark on top of the Ray and uh, integrating Spark with the distributed uh, machine learning and deep learning frameworks. Uh, for more inf information, you could visit uh, our GitHub repo. There are more, uh, four examples uh, of showing how to write end-to-end uh, workloads with RedDP and the other uh, components on top of the array. Okay, that's all, thanks.